Hey guys, welcome back. I know that I said I was going to post yesterday, Thursday, but I felt like I needed to take an extra day to edit this video because I didn't want to rush it and make it not good. So I felt like it was necessary for me to take an extra day to finish editing things properly and getting everything together and make it look good, etc. Yeah, I'm sorry for posting a day late, but um, at least you're getting to see this this week and I am so excited for you guys to see this video because I love doing DIYs at home, at least now I do. They were really fun to make for me and I also love that my room looks decorated, it's not plain anymore because I know that for a while I was complaining that there was literally nothing on my walls. So now my walls look really nice, especially here in my room. I'm hoping to do something else for the living room at some point, but um, that will come later. But anyway, I do have four DIYs to show you guys today and um, I hope you guys like them. I did get inspiration for a couple of these from Amanda Rachel Lee and a couple other sources through Pinterest so I will let you guys know where I got the inspiration from. I will make sure to leave the links for everything down below. Without further ado, let's just jump right into this video and like I said, yeah, I hope you guys like this. Let me know which one's your favorite and um, yeah. All right, let's start with the most time-consuming one the wall hanging made with yarn. It's very simple. You just need a ruler, scissors, a dowel, and some yarn. The thicker the better. You basically measure out the length you want and start cutting several strips. Mine were 50 inches long I believe and I used four pieces to tie on the dowel so it was a lot. I think I used most of the yarn. I do want to tell you guys to make sure to cut it longer. 50 inches wasn't long enough and mine ended up being super short so whenever I recreate something like this I'll be sure to either do 75 or 100 I know it sounds drastic but I would have liked this to be longer anyway now that I have all the yarn cut to 50 inches I am taking four of them folding them in half and then wrapping them around the dowel once like so I kept doing this for whatever yarn I had remaining and I even used white yarn because I thought it would look good if it was two colors Now what I'm going to do is separate two pieces of gray yarn and put them off to the side. I'm doing the same with the white and basically what I'm doing here, I'm just tying two gray with two white. Very simple knot. And I'm going to keep doing this throughout. I had done this a second time but it looked way too short so I only kept one knot. If your yarn strips are longer than mine, I'm sure you can keep going to create a nice macrame wall hanging. Now I'm using some white yarn and tying it at the ends of the dowel. This will hold up the entire thing so I can hang it. I don't remember how long it was, I'm sorry. I hung it up on the wall and started cutting it to make it even. Like I said, I wish I could have made it longer because it would look better if it was triangular at the bottom rather than flat, but that's okay. I think it looks fine where I place it in my room regardless. Next DIY is a wall grid which is super simple to do. I got 10 dowels that were 3 16 by 36 inches. I ended up cutting them down to 24 inches because I couldn't find any that size. I painted the dowels black and quickly sketched the layout on a poster board because I wanted them to be the same width apart from each other. They are 5.5 inches from each other both horizontally and vertically. I made sure to leave about half an inch on the ends on the top sides and bottom. Using a hot glue gun, I glued the top dowels down.
when you go and hang this i think it's better to have the horizontal dowels on top because you can put stuff on the dowels themselves and nothing will fall so that's it for this one super easy and it looks awesome on my wall i've already put some stuff in it and i hope to get a few more photos to add to this or maybe it will become my mood board i don't know next diy is a three-piece canvas one is a photo and the other two letters i'm going to start with the photo canvas i'm using an 8x10 canvas i believe that i bought from the dollar store along with some mod podge and some sponge brushes the instructions were to lay down a thick layer of mod podge on the canvas i actually advise you not to add too much because the paper seemed to soak up a lot of it and i didn't like how it looked maybe i did it wrong but i didn't spend much money on the canvas anyway so i can always redo this Lay down a thin layer just to be safe. Get your photo ready and place it onto your canvas. Being very careful to place it right in the middle so you can get the sides onto the canvas as well. Next, you are adding another thin layer to the top. This apparently gives it that canvas look to it and you're just going to let it dry overnight. And this is how it looks like. As you can see, it does look a little wrinkly, but the good thing is you can only tell when the light is shining on it weirdly from an angle and if you're looking at it up close. However, from afar it looks better and as I've said, I can always redo this another time. Now the letters. I painted two canvas of the same size black because I wanted the letters to be white and I really wanted them to stand out. Printed my letters as big as I wanted them to look. You turn over the letter that is printed on regular printed paper and use a pencil and shade the entire image of the letter as dark as possible this will allow you to trace the image onto the cardboard. Once you're done shading, place the letter over your cardboard and start tracing the outline of the letter. I use tape to keep it in place so it wouldn't move around so much. Next, I'm outlining it with Sharpie so it's easier to cut out with an X-Acto knife. Always be cautious when doing this. For me, the letter A was by far the hardest and I'm glad that I did that one off camera because it was a lot of trial and error with that one. I learned a lot from the letter A, so doing the letter R was much, much easier. Now that I have my stencil cut out, I'm cutting the cardboard shorter so I can place it on top of the canvas. The smaller the stencil is, then the canvas, the better so you can see where it will be placed. I'm using tape to keep it in place and I'm using a white jelly pencil to trace the outline onto my canvas. You can always make the lines thicker later. Using an angle paintbrush, I'm painting the letter, being careful to stay within the outline of the letter. I do go over it two or three times until the paint is opaque, which doesn't take long because the paint dries pretty fast. I also go back and use black paint to fill in any white paint that might have splattered. I do go back in with a sponge brush and dab it onto the canvas. I found this worked better than the brush and, and then you're done. I really like how this three piece canvas turned out. I have it up on my room and even though it's small, it's awesome looking. Last DIY is super easy, you only need some adhesive film with the pattern of choice. I chose the marble one because that's what I had at home. And you also need a photo frame, preferably one that is deep like this one. You don't necessarily need a white one, that's just what I wanted because I thought it would look better. You start by removing the backing of the frame and removing the glass and paper that comes with it. It's fine that mine has some text on it, I will be covering it so you won't see it anyway. Place the glass on top of the adhesive film and cut around it. Slowly and gently start placing the film onto the glass. Don't rush this part and make sure to smooth it out as you pull the paper off the adhesive to prevent air bubbles from forming.
turn it over and cut the extra film off the sides using an exacto knife. This will be more precise than scissors. And now you're ready to put it all back in the frame. I decided to leave the backing as is. You can take it off so it lays flat. I personally don't have a problem with it. I want to keep it intact in case I ever decide I want to use the frame for actual photos. But this is the result. It looks awesome and pretty. I can use it as a prop for my beauty flat lace. And when I'm not using it, it sits on top of my dresser with my crystals and stones. And that's it, you guys. I love how these DIYs turned out. They look super cool around my room and my walls definitely don't look as plain anymore. Make sure to like and subscribe if you still haven't and follow me on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys again next week for more content. Bye.